OK, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Ian. Uh, my name is Jamie Hartley. And as has just been said, I'm going to be talking about my work on the understanding the behavior of tufted sandwich structures in edgewise compression. Um, so just a little overview about what I'm going to talk about today. Um, starting off with some background to the project, uh, a quick introduction to tufting to those of you who are not familiar with it. Um, and then I'm going to go into looking at some of the work I've been doing on single tuft testing, as well as interactions between multiple tufts. And then finally, I'll close out with some of the work that I'm going to look to do in the near future. Um, so first of all, as I just mentioned, a quick overview of what tufting is. Um, tufting is effectively a through thickness reinforcement. Um, it's derived from stitching. So if you're familiar with stitching of composites, then it's, it's relatively close to that. The key difference that we have here is that we only use a single uh, threaded needle to insert the reinforcement into the preform, as you can see in the top right. Uh, the advantage of this, the primary one, is that you only need, therefore need access to one side of the preform. It gives you more flexibility in the design of your part, uh, as well as the tooling that you would need to use. Um, also, the effect of only using a single needle is that there is less effect on the fibers in plane, and that therefore gives you less of a knockdown in mechanical properties than you'd see in other reinforcement methods. It also potentially is a lot cheaper than some other 3D, more complex 3D reinforcement methods, such as 3D weaving. Um, so in particular, my area of focus is the use of this reinforcement within sandwich structures. Um, now, if you load a sandwich structure in edgewise compression, there's a tendency for the skins to disbond from the core relatively quickly uh, due to buckling or a weak interface. Um, but the use of tufting as a through thickness reinforcement that you can see in the bottom left helps maintain this bond uh, for a much greater uh, length of time. And this can therefore improve the energy absorption that you'd get from the structure which is obviously useful in something like an automotive vehicle where you need to absorb a large amount of energy in a crash. Um, so as I mentioned at the start, one of the things I've been looking at in particular is single tuft testing. Um, so the reason behind this, uh, first of all, one of the effects of using tufting is that because you're only accessing from one side of the preform, on the back face, what you get is these free loops that form on the surface. Um, one of the things I wanted to look at to start with is what effect these have on the performance of the material. Um, so the idea was to try and develop a test method that we could use to look at tufts in isolation to see the effect of changing some of the variables have. So as I mentioned at the top there, the, the key thing was to look at the effect of changing loop length, but because I was using a single tuft, I was also able to change the number of threads that I was using to see what effect that had. Um, so as I said, it, the, the new test method required a new coupon design, which I've shown in the bottom right here. And the idea of that there is to isolate a single tuft, test that in edgewise compression, and see what effect it's having. Um, so just a quick summary of the results. Obviously, I can't go into too much detail in the time I've got. Um, what this graph is showing is the energy absorption um, of each of these test coupons under different configurations, both static and dynamic. Um, basically, the, the two key things I just want to highlight here is, first of all, these are tufted coupons over the baselines which appear to the left. And you can see there's an increase, but between varying loop lengths, there's very little effect. Um, but if we start to add multiple threads through the thickness within a single point, what we see is a, a much greater increase. Uh, so this appears to be more, more of a relevant feature than perhaps the loop length itself is. Um, so just to go on to the second part of work I want to talk about today, um, one of the things we notice from this testing, uh, and just to go back to the start, the idea that because we're tufting through a sandwich core, the size of the needle is much greater than the size of the thread that we're using. Therefore, what this does is leave quite a large void within the core. And this gives us a, a relatively large resin column. As you can see up here, this is one that's detached after failure. And what we started to notice through testing is that these detach and they start to drift through the core. Because it's being crushed, obviously, it's being forced downwards. And so one thing we want to look at is what effect this has if we add multiple tufts and they start to collide with each other, what would happen from that? Um, and just a quick overview of this test. It's still in relatively early days. We're still looking at results. But basically, what we, we've started to see so far from tracking the test is that the effect of having multiple tufts, as you can see highlighted here with these dots, um, they start to drift as the crushing be uh, behavior goes on. And they'll start to collide with each other. And we've already started to see some interesting results about how this is starting to affect the, the global failure of the structure. And this is something we'd like to look at in a bit more detail. Um, so just to sum up, uh, close out with some of the future work I'd like to look at. As I said in a previous slide, the ideal is to look more into how tufts interact with each other and what effect that has on global failure. Um, the also, there's an idea to try and uh, push this into a modeling approach for tufted sandwich structures. The idea being is we can better predict failure. We can hopefully improve the design of something a bit larger, something like this. 
Um, so I'd just like to thank Harry Clegg at the NCC and Paul Berry here at the University of Bristol that helped uh, in the manufacture of a lot of the test coupons that I've been using. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and I'd like to take any questions. Thank you.